Oh, good morning. Oh, well, I was doing a little snooping after uh, I got my new schematic that's readable. It's a little physically small, but that's my fault. And I noticed here, focus, there you go. If you look at C12 here, it goes from the plate to ground. And what that does is, uh, and I think I mentioned this, it, uh, quiet. It, uh, shaves a little bit of the highs off of the radio. Output. It kind of takes, uh, you know, annoying crackles and pops and things off there a little bit. So it makes the radio appear to be not so noisy, even though it is noisy. And uh, I got to looking at that, and I actually had to back up. I guess this is one one little advantage for recording some of these things is that you can use it as a tool to back up and see um, what you did or didn't do. And that cap is right here. The original cap that was in there. Another reason to save your video or to save your parts for both. That original cap, I thought this was my imagination for a minute until I got to looking at this. Um, this original cap is 0 0.05 microfarad at 600 volt. And it was originally tucked in there. It was originally from this pin here, pin 7, over. What looks like pin one on the output tube. And if you look at that, that uh, tube is the V4, it's the 50C6, it's the audio output tube. And pin one is the plate where high voltage, well, yeah, relatively high voltage would be. And pin one is the cathode where relatively low voltage would be. And I got to thinking about that, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, that's not what the drawing shows. Why would that be? And I thought I had miswired that. And if you remember a few videos ago, I was kind of questioning this cap. I think I made a comment of, you know, I took that out. And, uh, I guess go with your instincts, because that is all wrong. I'm going to have to have to stop and straighten it all out. First off, that value is wrong, but not critical. Um, the more capacitance you put on there, the more the audio you're going to shave off. And this uh, this radio is kind of crackly anyway. It's just, just a little AM radio, and they're kind of notoriously noisy. Uh, but hooking the cap from the plate to the cathode, <laughs> probably not such a great idea. And I thought I had done that wrong. And looked and looked and looked and looked and looked. And I come to the conclusion that I had not done that wrong, that either somebody else had done that wrong since it was a repair, or maybe it was done wrong at the factory. Or maybe it's a change to the, uh, the layout of the radio, which I kind of don't believe. I don't see any reason to do that. And if you look at other radios, there's no reason to do that. It, it kind of defeats the purpose. So I'm going to have to stop and fix that. A couple other things have happened.
apparently the tooth fairy came by in the middle of the night. If you kind of remember, we're kind of doing this on a budget. And it's kind of turning into a comedy of annoying budget errors. And I'm trying to see how far I can really take this. Well, somebody came by last night. Originally, the only tool, originally the kind of the only tool I had was this, and I was attempting to use uh, shears and chisels and everything but an actual a pair of side cutters. And I got these a little trading. Got me these. Well, I got a box of junk this morning um, that somebody left on the porch, and uh, probably. It's probably um, John, well, not John the Carpenter, the, the probably the first per time you've ever heard me talk about John. John I'm going to start calling him John the Hurried, because he is always in a hurry. He's kind of like the white rabbit. Anyway, there was a pretty decent pair of channel lock um, hook nose pliers in there. So I'm going to have to remove this cap, which I'm not too happy about. Although I've been playing this radio for a little bit, and it's it plays just fine, but um, in the uh, I don't know, it needs to be fixed. It's not right. So all that work I did just turned to hell. That's the way this goes sometimes. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, I'm a little bit grumpy about that, but that, you know, I at least Like I said, I backed up and looked at the video. Normally I would have blamed myself, but like I said, I looked at this and determined that I actually wasn't at fault. Now, I guess this cap is somewhat salvageable. I mean, it's useful. The leads are pretty long on it. Just annoying. Okay, so... And a couple other things have ensued. Uh, I had to go over to my mom's the other day, and on the way back, I stopped at a uh, what do they call those um, rummage sale. The church is having a rummage sale. It's a yard sale for church. Anyway, there's a, there's a little church over up the hill from her, and um, they're cleaning out stuff. And they take donations from their patrons and stuff. Anyway, I uh, got a couple packages of brand new batteries for, I don't know, I think it was a dollar or two. Yeah, really, it's a donation. That's fine. Okay, so, in the scheme of things, uh, and the cameraman had a big breakfast today, so you really ought to be on the ball here. So we're going to go from the plate, which is pin 7, over to ground. And this is all very, I don't know why this is all kind of oily and black under here. I think this is all fallout from that, that cap that exploded. I have tried my best. Hang on a tick here. Let me try something. Well, let's see if I can clean this up a little bit. Um, this is just... I just got some Q-tips. Um, actually, I like the ones with wooden shafts, but they're kind of hard to find. They're the medical ones. These are just the annoying ones you get at the store and shove in your ear. Yeah, there's... And I'm just using some... This is uh, this is supposedly tape head cleaner. 
it's actually just uh, denatured alcohol. And FYI, be a little careful. Don't get to use in rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol sometimes has kind of essential oils and other mysterious chemicals in it. And uh, it can leave behind a film. Yeah, I should have did this a while back. Yuck. Yeah, there's some goo on there. Alcohol won't hurt most plastics or things, so I'm just trying to clean up the... Actually, I'm cleaning up those resistors a little bit. You just can't see the values on them. Now, that one looks like a meg. That one's 150 ohms. I don't know what this black stuff is, but it's very yucky. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, okay. Anyway, you can get a pint of alcohol at the hardware store. Okay. So we need to go from pin seven of the audio output two, which is V4, which is here, to ground. And there isn't a close ground. You go from there to there, pretty tight. I bet we could do it though. Yep, it could be done. It'd be just a Tiny bit of a squeeze, but it can be done. Okay, so I'm going to use the old one here as kind of a template to get a rough idea how far to trim those caps, those leads. I mean, this is a Doing these kind of videos is interesting because you're talking, you know, you're talking to nobody, and there's no interaction. And it's a little kind of eerie. Hmm, boy, there's a lot of stuff in there. But I bet we can get this that point here is ground. But it's very it's a little crowded. There's already three lead, four leads in there, but this lead is pretty small, so I'm gonna see if I can weasel a baby in there. So, oh my god, it's a battery. So now we can do a little testing. It just isn't going to go in there, is it? It's in there, but it won't. Oh, there we go. That's about as good as it's going to get it. a vain attempt to push that down. This punch board technology is probably okay, but uh, like I said, after it's been soldered on, it's a little more annoying. Okay, well, I got that to poke through. And then I let go and it promptly cooled. Now I have no plans on leaving that like that. I'm just trying to center this up a little bit. Stop it. I guess I'm just a fuss pot. Okay. Now 
I'm going to fuss pot up to the point where I get annoyed. <laughs> okay, well that looks a lot better. It, like I said, it won't affect the radio's operation one tiny bit, other than it makes me feel better. Okay. So another reason to have the correct schematic. Um, you know, sometimes things aren't, they just aren't right. That was kind of doubly not right. I'm a little puzzled about that. It's not the right component. I can I can figure that out, but not the right place. That one's got me scratching my head a little bit. So I'll take the uh, angle pliers here and kind of flatten that out. Okay, well, not that it's going to make any difference, but a little testing is in order. Government, like the thousands of pages of regulations the Obama administration has mandated, it's just this government in our lives. Okay. I'm supported by my fellow Nebraskans, not the Washington, D.C. Okay, okay, so, um, in the scheme of things... We really only have um, one paper cap to replace. It's this one here. It's a little kludgy. This is um, this is kind of an irritant because it. Uh, This lead is just slid under that, you know, terminal board. There's actually a little eyelet here. And they've crimped that right up against. Well, no, you know, I don't maybe I take that back. Maybe they haven't. It looks like maybe they coiled that. Yeah, the wax is melted onto there. It's Okay. So This is probably about as exciting as watching mud dry, but these are the things you run into. I didn't notice that, huh? That's interesting. It's always interesting when you where you work, you look the thing over, and then you give it a actual uh, good looking at. This is kind of interesting. There's a ground on this. Oh, that's why that terminal is different. Remember, I told you in the one of the uh, one of the videos, early early video, kind of a supplement video, that uh, some of these sockets were different. There were there were three different types of sockets. This one I actually can see is different. There's a a little pin there that runs to ground. That's spot welded. Must be a little shielding there. We have a few issues with our. Uh, line up there maybe and if I remember right that was the second tube that's the IF tube there that's V2 in your schematic I think that's a 12BA6 and uh, that had a tube shield over it so they must be trying to keep something in or something out or something stable or something borrowed and something blue I don't know okay well Let's, uh, let's get that fixed. Now, according to the schematic, this is uh, this cap. Oh, let's see. Goes to B minus. Is that right? That doesn't look right. Mm, yeah, that's right. And it goes over to that uh, little coil, that broadcast oscillator coil, T1. And it's C3, it's 0 0.05 microfarad in the schematic. 
So we'll just do what we've been doing. Maybe the bigger pliers are a little more appropriate. You know, really, I had to do each. Here's the deal on this: when you do these videos, you're talking to yourself. You get these thoughts. Um, you don't have a script, which is kind of a no-no on TV. And uh, you really had to break these things up in stages. And you never get any work done because you're busy worrying about what other people think. And one of the other things you're doing is you're worrying whether you got the right lead on these punch boards or not. Assume that's the right lead. No, that is not the right lead. Come on. And this is about the time the phone rings. Come on. There we go. Fucked it right out of there. Okay. Uncoil this, and this is, yep, yeah, 0.5, 400 volts, some no name brand. Yeah. Kind of the downer on this is there is a little lug, a crimp lug, right there. There we go. And unfortunately, they crimped that on there. Actually, they crimped. They got like four or five wires under there. There's, well, there's the. Yeah, they got four wires. There's two, three whites, and a, uh, and that cap. And this hooks to the frame. This goes through these rubbers. Excuse me. These little rubber insulators go through into the. Uh, into the uh, RF section for the antenna for the tuning cap. Well, that's not very pretty, is it? Well, I'm not going to get that up uh, apart. So, I think what we're going to do, that's interesting. Again, find some little tidbits here. Where did I see that? Right there. Now I reach the range of the focus of my camera. Right here, there's some kind of melted insulation on that wire. What's weird is I don't see a repair anywhere near this, so this might have been done at the factory. Okay, dokie. Well. I think on this one we're just going to have to bite the bullet and I'm just going to clip it off close to the body there and like I said you can see this cap here hmm. and the gear again there's that uh, do I have it? there's that band that's the, kind of the low side of these paper caps hmm. So for living right, we can reuse this cap. Let's see. So mental note: is one of these leads longer than the other? No. And is it not a ground anywhere closer? Right. I'm going to stick this back in circuit. 
And that cap is actually the uh, don't like how that felt. There we go. Okay. So that side is ground. I suppose we could take that out of there until we need a repair or two. We'll fire it back up. Okay. Hmm. Hang on. 